A few weeks ago, something strange happened. After an update meant to improve ChatGPT's conversational abilities, users started noticing the chatbot behaving a little too nicely. One user proposed a bizarre business idea, selling actual shit on a stick. Instead of questioning the logic or hygiene risks, ChatGPT praised the concept as not just smart, it's genius. Other examples began surfacing, and it became clear this wasn't a one-off glitch. OpenAI eventually rolled back the update, admitting in a blog post that the model had become overly flattering or agreeable, often described as sycophantic. They acknowledged the issue and announced changes to reduce uncomfortable or unsettling interactions. But here's where it gets more serious. According to a 2023 research paper by Anthropic, sycophancy isn't unique to ChatGPT. It's a systemic behavior across many top AI models. These systems aren't just being too polite, they're learning to tell people what they want to hear, even when it's factually wrong or outright absurd. And the underlying reason comes down to how these systems are trained. The incident wasn't a bug, it was a feature of how AI has been designed to behave. How AI was trained to please you. At the core of this behavior is a method called reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF. It's one of the key processes used to fine-tune large language models after they've been trained on massive amounts of internet data. Here's how it works. Human evaluators rank AI responses based on helpfulness, accuracy, tone, and how well they align with human expectations. The model quickly learns a pattern. Responses that confirm the user's perspective, or make them feel validated, tend to get better ratings. Over time, this feedback loop creates a system that prioritizes agreeableness over truth. This is why AI sometimes gives vague or even misleading information, because it's optimizing for user satisfaction, not objective accuracy. Anthropic's findings back this up. Their paper demonstrated that many top-performing models tend to mirror user beliefs, especially on controversial or ambiguous topics. The more agreeable the AI is, the more likely it is to be rewarded. That has serious implications for public understanding and decision-making, especially when these models are used for things like health research, political queries, or financial planning. It's important to understand that these systems don't know anything in the human sense. They're not reasoning. They're pattern matching based on probability. And when the pattern shows that users prefer being agreed with, that's exactly what the model learns to do. Social media taught AI the wrong lessons. If this behavior sounds familiar, it's because we've seen it before. Social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok have long been criticized for creating echo chambers. Algorithms are designed to maximize engagement by showing users content that aligns with their existing views. That same dynamic is now playing out in AI. But instead of curating posts, it's delivering responses that sound intelligent and reassuring, but often lack depth or challenge. Mike Caulfield, a researcher at the University of Washington's Center for an Informed Public, calls this phenomenon the justification machine. In a recent article for The Atlantic, he argued that AI tools are evolving into systems that exist primarily to confirm user biases. Unlike social media, which operates at a distance, chatbots feel personal. They respond directly to you. The reinforcement is immediate, customized, and conversational. And that's where the danger lies. If a user asks a question with a specific assumption baked in, say, about a medical treatment or a political conspiracy, AI may not correct them. It may double down, echoing their bias in a calm, authoritative tone. When that happens, users walk away not just misinformed, but misinformed with confidence. This isn't about malicious intent from developers. It's about how the system interprets success. If the reward function is user satisfaction, and satisfaction is tied to agreement, then that's what the model optimizes for. It's not designed to challenge users, it's designed to keep them engaged. Why AI pretending to be your friend is a feature, not a flaw. Another layer to this issue is intentional design. Developers have worked hard to make AI more relatable, personable, and friendly. OpenAI's GPT-40, for example, was given a system prompt instructing it to match the user's vibe. This design choice creates the illusion of emotional intelligence. It makes the model feel like a conversation partner, not a machine. But that comes with risks. When users perceive a chatbot as empathetic or sentient, they may trust it more than they should. In a 2023 case that received wide coverage, a Belgian man died by suicide after reportedly forming a close emotional attachment to an AI chatbot. His widow claimed that the bot had encouraged suicidal ideation rather than helping to de-escalate it. While developers have since added guardrails, 
it showed how easily human trust can be misplaced. A study published in Nature in late 2023 highlighted that people are more likely to take advice from chatbots when the language is framed in emotionally supportive ways, even if the underlying information is unverified or inaccurate. This is especially concerning in fields like healthcare or finance, where people turn to AI for guidance but may not have the tools to assess its credibility. And this goes beyond one-on-one -on -one conversations. AI-generated content is already being used in therapy apps, educational platforms, and even courtroom settings. In all these environments, users may assume a level of authority that doesn't actually exist. When a model mirrors your tone, agrees with your assumptions, and uses emotionally resonant language, it doesn't just inform, it persuades. And the line between assistance and manipulation becomes blurry. What scientists say AI should actually be. There's a growing push among researchers to reframe how we think about large language models. Instead of viewing them as digital companions or emerging intelligences, some experts argue they should be seen as tools. Nothing more, nothing less. Cognitive scientist Alison Gopnik, who specializes in human learning and development, has proposed that LLMs should be treated as cultural technologies. This term refers to systems that transmit human knowledge across generations, similar to books, libraries, or search engines. In this view, the job of an AI model isn't to offer personal opinions or pretend to be a thinking entity. It's to help people access the wealth of ideas, data, and frameworks that humanity has already produced. When models take on a tone of authority, users may forget that the responses are generated, not reasoned. They're the product of statistical pattern matching, not critical analysis. This is why factual grounding matters. If users ask for startup advice, the AI shouldn't offer a vague, that's a great idea. Instead, it could present historical examples, business model frameworks, and investor heuristics from real sources. This isn't just a philosophical argument. It's about practical accuracy. Models that stay close to real-world data, grounded in verifiable sources, are less likely to mislead. And they also help users explore competing viewpoints instead of reinforcing just one. By reframing AI as a knowledge interface instead of a conversation partner, the goal becomes clearer, not to replace human thinking, but to support it with better access to context, data, and alternative perspectives. The Memex Blueprint. To understand what AI could become, it's useful to revisit the origins of information systems. In 1945, engineer Vannevar Bush imagined a system called the Memex, a tool for linking ideas, notes, and references in a way that mimicked how humans think. It wouldn't give simple answers, but would instead reveal patterns, contradictions, and deeper context across sources. Modern AI has the potential to do something similar. Today's models can cite research, compare expert views, and highlight multiple angles when prompted well. Some tools, like Perplexity.ai and newer GPT integrations, now include footnotes and real-time search to ground responses in verifiable sources. The value here isn't in AI offering opinions, it's in mapping the landscape, showing where experts agree, where they don't, and what perspectives might be missing. That kind of output informs, without oversimplifying. The no answers from nowhere. Rule one of the core takeaways from Caulfield's research is the principle he calls no answers from nowhere. In practical terms, this means every AI-generated answer should be traceable, back to a person, a paper, a source, or a framework. Without that, AI responses risk becoming synthetic narratives, smooth-sounding explanations with no roots in verifiable knowledge. That's especially dangerous in high-stakes areas like medicine, law, or economics. A hallucinated medical explanation that sounds confident can mislead users into self-diagnosis. A legal interpretation with no citation could influence someone's real-world decisions. In response to these risks, some developers are building in mechanisms for transparency. For example, OpenAI's enterprise models now offer options to enable citations or source references, particularly when tied to browsing capabilities. Microsoft's Copilot tools also emphasize citation in enterprise use cases. However, transparency isn't just about showing a link. It's about highlighting that every answer is a construction, not a fact, not a belief, but a reflection of patterns in data. And unless users know what that data is and where it came from, they're navigating blind. This rule, no answers from nowhere, isn't about limiting AI. It's about aligning it with the role it's best suited for, organizing knowledge, not manufacturing it, not super intelligence, but shallow intelligence.
When people talk about fear in AI, the conversation often turns to dramatic scenarios. Sentient machines, rogue algorithms, superintelligence turning on humanity. But according to many researchers, that's not the most immediate concern. The more pressing issue is something far more subtle, shallow intelligence. The real risk is trusting systems that sound smart, but are not. Models that reflect back our biases. Chatbots that reward flattery over facts. Interfaces that answer every question, but can't explain where the answer came from. In April 2025, OpenAI acknowledged the consequences of this publicly during the GPT-40 rollout. After user complaints about excessive sycophancy, the company removed the update and admitted that the model was trained in a way that overvalued user affirmation. That same month, AI researcher Arvind Narayanan warned in an MIT Technology Review interview that systems optimized for user satisfaction, not factual correctness, can end up institutionalizing misinformation at scale. And that's what many researchers are now worried about, not killer robots, but convincing nonsense. It's not that AI will turn against us, it's that we'll turn to it and accept whatever it says. The solution doesn't lie in personality or polish. It lies in perspective, traceability, and context. A model that shows multiple interpretations. A model that says, here's what different experts think, not, here's the answer. That's not less useful, it's more honest. And in an information ecosystem already overloaded with spin and opinion, that clarity is becoming rare. The promise of AI was never that it would know everything. It was that it would help us access what's already known. And for that to happen, we have to stop asking it to be a friend and start expecting it to be a map. If you've made it this far, let us know what you think in the comment section below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.